to all our CCR TV viewers a warm welcome. You are about uh, to watch uh, this special program with uh, our student entrepreneur and she is none other than Sanalda Lopish. Welcome Sanalda. Nice to have you here with us at CCR TV. You have been designated as a student entrepreneur. Yes. A student normally is not an entrepreneur, but you have been given this added title. And especially I was told that during COVID, you did a lot of things which normally a student does not do. Yes. Could you tell us exactly what uh, promoted you to do what you have done and then explain to us what all you could do? Okay, so I started off as, with an NSS assignment, that is National Service Scheme assignment. So you you have been a student uh, uh, where? In Damodar College. In Marlo. Damodar College. Yes. You are doing your uh, graduation. I completed my graduation in Commerce. Yeah. I've done Bachelors of Commerce. And uh, our assignment was to make masks because initially surgical masks were not available to the common public. It was only available to doctors and other medical staff. So we were told to make cloth masks and give them, distribute them in among our neighbors. And I grabbed whatever material I could find and I stitched a mask. Now as for the sewing machine, it has a very interesting story behind it. When I turned 16, my grandfather gifted me a sewing machine, a fully computerized sewing machine. And when he gave it to me, he said, Bye, I'm to get to Kaza Zate do Aspana. So, Kazra Denyan to sewing machine, Atandit tuka. So, the first mask that I made had to go to my grandfather. I didn't think twice. And uh, when my grandfather saw the neatness of it, she's like, he's like, Soglian Kortu. Like, why are you holding back? Make for everyone. So, I was a part of a Mando, we'll cover that later. I was a part of a Mando group. And I had a leftover fabric, a velvet fabric. And I've been seeing velvet scrunchies everywhere. And I thought I can make one myself. Why simply spend so much money and buy it? I made, I made it for myself. I made it for my cousin. And when my cousin saw the scrunchie, she said, this is better quality than what is available in the market. So she's like, why don't you start selling this? So I started doing my R&D for masks and scrunchies and initially it was a task finding fabrics in the market because all stores were shut due to, due to COVID and uh, whatever fabric I had left over inside is what I collected and I started stitching it whatever, whatever I had and uh, I started slowly slowly it took me about a month and a half to completely figure out what I want to be selling and I started my own page on Instagram called Soon by Sinelda. And when I started off, I didn't really expect it to hit off that well because the econ economy was crashing during COVID. And masks also are not something people were not, people didn't have faith in cloth masks. All their faith was in surgical masks because nobody want, like to be fair, nobody wanted to die. So they didn't really believe in cloth masks. And when I started, I started small and my first orders were from friends and family. And then slowly people started getting to know because my cousin, the one who encouraged me to start the business is a dentist. And under her N95, she would wear my cloth masks and everyone appreciated how neatly it was done. So I started making fancier masks. Like I would buy embroidered patches from the market and then stitch it on. Like, so they liked the finish of how I would stitch it on. And she told everyone about my business and then they told more people about my business. And that's when it started to grow. Why I ventured into the scrunchy part of the business is I am born with naturally curly hair. And to, since childhood, we've been told that straight hair is what every woman should desire. But I've seen my mother with curly hair and I've always wanted hair as curly as hers. Unfortunately, my hair is not as curly as hers. So my cousin told me, why don't you start this thing called curly girl method? And she explained it to me and I was like, who has the patience to sit and do all that? You wash your hair, you condition your hair, then you put in leave-in conditioner, leave-in cream, hair gels, crunch it out. And I didn't have the patience for that. So when I started, uh, CGM was in the first phase of the lockdown, that is in 2020. 
and I started looking for things that are used in CGM. So the products that we use in CGM are organic products, sulfate free, silicon free. But the other things that are accessories like scrunchies, pillowcases, those are made out of satin. And satin is very easily available, it is cheaper, but when you buy it online, it was very expensive. This crunchy that I've made, if I would have to buy it online, I would have to pay 200 rupees. 200 rupees? Yes. For this small piece? For this thing. You can feel it if you want yeah. to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, if I had to buy it online, this would cost me 200 rupees. Whereas the making cost of this is barely 30 rupees. 30 rupees? 30 yes. zero? Yes. 30 rupees. Yes. So, I was like, why not? Like, there must be so many other curly girls like me who would want to do CGM but are holding back because of financial instability. So I started making scrunchies and I gave them cheaper options. Like this one right here uh, is the cheapest one I had, which was going for 30 rupees. I used to sell it for 30 rupees. This one was sold for 50 rupees. And then people started asking for more variants in fabrics and everything. So I started introducing whichever material I was getting in the market, but I made sure it was good for the hair. So I introduced a velvet scrunchie it's very soft it's like it feels like a teddy bear yes. for your hair yes so i started introducing this then slowly one day my cousin found this reel on instagram that said um while you're traveling it's very difficult to travel with money so why not introduce a scrunchie with a zip you can keep your money inside the scrunchie like you won't even know once you tie it tie your hair with it you can't even tell that there is money in it so, uh, later on, yeah, of course, they started using this to take chits inside exam halls. <laughs> okay. But, uh, um, yeah, so initially the purpose was for traveling so that they can take money. But uh, did you think at that time that you would make little money? I honestly didn't think I would make any money at all. Uh, I funded this business because... Uh, Initially, before COVID started, a new restaurant had opened in, in my locality and my mother has always been taking orders for Bibinka and all. So I thought like I would take orders as well. They contacted me asking, do you make any desserts? So I'm like, okay, fine, I can, I can try making something. So they were like, we, we wanted to sell Seradura. I had never made Seradura before, but Seradura was something that I loved eating. So I made some. And I gave a sample to them. I didn't expect them to place an order also. But when they ate it, they loved it so much that uh, they set me as their permanent contractor for Seradura. And the first order I took, I borrowed money from Mama. I'm like, the moment I get the money from this, I'm going to give it back to you. And did you return later on? Yes. So that I means did. You, you made a lot of, yes. lot of profits. Yes. And when I uh, started making profits from Seradura, I made it a point that since my mother was the one who gave me money for the business, I made it a point that I give her something back, not just the money that I borrowed, but I bought her a pair of diamond earrings. Is it? Yes, because my mother owned a lot of gold. So, but so you made uh, big money? Not big money. <laughs> <laughs> I went and I asked them for the cheapest diamond earring where okay. they had. Okay. But diamonds are not but cheap. But as a student, did yes. you even dream that uh, you would not reach at all. Uh, this not stage? Not at all. I've completed 800 business nationally and about 200 international orders. International? Yes. So you had international orders? Yes. And how would you manage that? So international orders, very few would opt for the delivery service that uh, was shipping through Indian Post. But most of them would say, I have a family member coming from Goa. Okay. I'm, they're coming to Dubai, they're coming to UK, just send it with them. So that's how most of the international orders were shipped. The national orders were done through Speed Post. Initially, when I just started, it was only pickup and I would deliver if I'm going by that route or something. So I would have to call them again and again. I've reached here. Please come and pick up your order. I'd give them landmarks like the church or a chapel or something. But that was getting very hectic. So my the same cousin, who, again, who encouraged me to start the business, she started. She told me that, why don't you try Speed Post? I sent my wedding invites through Speed Post. They reached within a week. So I was like, okay, fine. I tried and my first in experimental um, speed post delivery was to Moira. Now from the south to the north to come during COVID times was very difficult. So Moira was a big achievement. And uh, that's when I feel like the UPI phase was booming in India. Because during COVID, nobody wanted to exchange currency. 
in a like the physical currency so upi started growing in india at that point so i started taking online orders with delivery only if they were prepaid because unfortunately the indian speed post doesn't have the cash on delivery option so yeah that's how i managed the delivery of the orders yeah but when you started first what was that motivating factor for you i honestly since the time i was in school i never had anything like pocket money so i knew that my standards are very high coming from a posh school uh, my standards are very which school were you i studied in manobikas english medium high school that is which board now icse okay yeah so like i was surrounded by businessmen children politicians children and coming from a middle class family it is a little difficult to cope up with having those people around you and never having had pocket money as such it's not like i never got what i wanted i was always given what i wanted but i wanted to buy something for myself earned by me so this was what drove me to actually so covid came as a, a, as blessing, a blessing to in me in this guy yes okay yes okay so, and, and more or less more or less how much you think financially you have been rewarded uh i bought a bike for myself bike like yeah an actual an activa okay. i bought a bike for myself not the full amount like i don't think so many students would uh, uh think like what you have uh, thought yeah. and much less done what you have done yes what so, what is that motivating factor for you you have something extraordinary in your blood uh when i started with stitching i saw when I, especially i i'm a i'm a perfectionist so when i started seeing the masks that they were selling in the market like the cloth masks i was like this is disgusting work <laughs> okay i don't want to see th- i like i i mean i wouldn't uh, say it's disgusting but like that was a necess- necessity of the hour so i would wear anything in that point but i wanted to wear something that i stitched by myself and being the perfectionist that i am i wanted to be neat so that's what motivated me to pursue this this line of business and second thing was uh yeah my, that during covid my father lost his job he was in the gulf he lost his job during covid and i'm not saying that put us in a financially weak position but still it does play on your mind that you know i don't want to put any pressure on them So when you go to college everyone's going let's go here let's go there but everyone's parents are giving them money to go here and there but I didn't want to put that pressure on my parents I know they could support it but I didn't want to put that pressure on them so I was like why pressurize them and so I thought of doing it myself so the motivating factors were the neatness like I believed in myself that I could actually put out neatness out there and the money I am not saying money was a major part of it but seeing the smiles that I could bring on people's faces by what I was doing when I saw someone eating the seradura and saying it is yummy that brought a special happiness in me when someone told me that my hair is feeling happy after using your accessories I was very happy I my happiness had no bounds like that's that's one of the major motivating factors that and and you also pursued your studies yes did you finish your graduation uh i've completed my graduation yes and graduation in uh, commerce in commerce in commerce yes. okay and and uh, what are your future plans now i plan on doing mba and i actually have taken a two years gap first because the results were delayed so i couldn't apply in that uh, academic year and now the second time i couldn't apply because of technical difficulties and i could have gotten into any institution because my cmat score was fairly high compared to what others have got it i've stood in uh, in the 9000s uh, range out of 50000 students is it yes so uh, i could have gotten into any institution but c- thinking of my future prospects i wanted to get into a reputed institution because once you go out of goa they don't accept any random college you need to have that reputed institution degree in your so hands so that high ranking is uh, yes. always yes yes so um even if you want to go outside india for that matter of fact you need to have a reputed institution's degree certificate in your hands for instance my cousin uh, went to study in delhi and they didn't accept her certificate which was from goa i wouldn't want to mention the name of the college 
but they didn't accept that uh, certificate saying the NAC accreditation is very low. Okay. Like, okay. Uh, if you scored in that college, we don't know what is your actual intellectual value. So, we wouldn't want to. We'll put you on the wait list, but we'll see. We'll ha uh, we'll have to see during your personal interviews how you do. She did well in her personal interviews, and that's how she got into that college. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I <coughs> thought, like whoever I spoke to, everyone said the institution that you're waiting to get into. I actually want to get in Goa and get into in Goa Institute of Management. And everyone said that the institute you're waiting to get into is wait worth waiting for another year also. Because once you get into that institution, your life is set. You're done. You, you don't have to worry any further. So that's why I took the decision of waiting another year. Yeah, but when you started doing all these things, you continued pursuing also your studies. Yes, I continued pursuing my decision. And, and uh, how good did you finish? I uh, got an A grade okay. in my graduation. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, BCom. Yes. That's become. Yes. And you switched over from a different system of education from Manovikas to this. Yes. How was that uh, shift that you made from two different boards? It was it was dreadful at the beginning because in Manovikas we were used to understanding everything. It was mostly, mostly um, aptitude based. It was not mugging up everything. We didn't have to mug up anything. The teachers would actually come read the textbook, explain it to us, not line by line, maybe paragraph to paragraph, what was important. We didn't We didn't have digests to sit and learn the answers by heart. Uh, so it was mainly understanding. We had to read the textbooks, gain knowledge and answer accordingly. For that matter of fact, even English, we uh, had to read the textbooks and answer. There were no ready-made answers for us. So when I shifted to Goa board, the in 11th standard, the first term exam that was in August, I answered that and I thought I answered very well. As per my background, I thought I answered very well. But when I got the mark sheet in my hand, I was shocked. Because teachers have cut marks for missing out words from the answers they've given us, for missing out a single word, even a single word, if it's missing, they cut half mark. And because of that, I lost like five marks out of 20. 6 marks out of 20. One paper I got borderline passing marks. Passing marks were 7 and I got 9. That is uh, English for that matter of fact. This, some a subject that I thought I wouldn't even have to prepare for, which I was so confident in, I got 9 out of 20. And I was actually shocked because that is not something I would ever expect. Yeah, and, and then you switched over and then you did pretty well. I did well, but it took me a year. It took me uh, figuring out how to go about that education system for over, year, uh, over a year. You compare my 11 standard marks to my 12 standard marks, my 11 standard marks are very bad. Like for me, it is very bad because I scored 61% in uh, 11 standard and that is not something that I wanted. I'm not saying I performed very well in the 12 standard. I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist, but I'm a procrastinator. I don't sit and study. If the exam is tomorrow, I'll sit and study today. So because of that, my percentage did go low. And again, the same thing, sitting and uh, studying and by hearting the answers was still something that I couldn't do. I still can't do it, but I tried my best. I did what I could. I framed the answers into songs. I started singing because I'm a singer, so I can learn lyrics very easily. So I was like, why not try that? I framed the answers into songs and I started singing out the answers. And that's what helped me by heart the answers. So in the exam hall, I'm singing the answers and people are just staring at this, staring at me like, what is this woman doing? Why is she singing in the exam hall? But I'm singing and I'm writing my answers. And I scored, I got distinction in 12th standard. And... Uh, the teachers th that saw my papers in school told me, like in higher secondary, they told me at this rate, if you don't buy heart, you're not even going to get first class. So when they saw my result, I topped the institution in my stream. And when they saw my result, they were shocked. Like, how did you manage to do this? I was like, songs. <laughs> okay. I framed the answers that you all gave me into songs. Okay. And then you joined the NSS, you said. Yeah, I joined NSS in college. In I, college. Yes. Yeah. And was this during this period of COVID? No. So uh, when I was in the first year, 
uh, we had normal college life. We were just starting to get the feel of college life. We answered our first semester exams. We answered our internal exams and everything. And uh, when our semester end exams were supposed to happen in March, they said that they are postponing it to April. And the first lockdown, I think, was imposed on 21st March. And they kept telling us that, you know, our exams are going to be held in May, going to be held in June, going to be held in July. But there was no sign of colleges reopening at all. Finally, at the end of April, they decided that uh, they will take an average of our internal marks. And for the first time in my life, I scored 100 out of 100 in maths. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I've never scored 100 out of For the matter of fact, getting 50% in maths is a big deal for me because maths is something that I've never been able to do. Since, since the time they've introduced alphabets into maths, is maths has become my biggest enemy. So even while deciding to take commerce, uh, I didn't want to do commerce because I thought commerce was fully maths based. And uh, but I did my aptitude test in St. Xavier's Mumbai and he said you have an aptitude that can, you know, you'll fit in anywhere. But I feel you'll do the best in commerce. And I'm grateful that he told me to go ahead with commerce because I actually enjoyed commerce. I so, so that aptitude test did help you? Yes. And I actually enjoyed doing commerce. I loved doing accounting because it was not just maths. It was reasoning ability. But uh, this also, what you have done, yeah. brought you a lot of money. Yes. So, so, so again, it's maths. Yeah, so I didn't have to hire anyone to handle my finances. I was handling my own finances. Okay. okay. Yeah. And this is teaching part. Yeah. From where did you get it? I had done a diploma course in Margao. And uh, that was basically garments, not accessories. And I started stitching because my grandfather gave me the sewing machine. And uh, like, I don't know, I just started experimenting with stuff and that's how I got and, it. And, yeah, and you proved very successful. Yes. And that kept you going. Yes, that kept me going. And do you still uh, uh, do anything? I in this? had stopped because college started. So when I started, our lectures were online and it was very easy because I would just leave my phone over there at the side. And I would, one side I would be stitching, one side I would be attending the lectures. I roam, roam around the whole house while the lecture is going on. So it was fine that time. But then when physical lectures started, they started alternate bases. So we had to go, 50% of the students were on one day, while the rest of the 50% were on another day. So the days that I was at home, it was easy for me to stitch. I continued, we started college in September and I continued till December. And uh, that's when I did a pop-up bazaar in Panjim. Is it? Yes. In Panjim Con Convention Center. Yeah, what did you do exactly? I sold all my things. You Everything. Sold, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I sold 90% of the products that I had made and got. Uh, what are the products? If you can repeat yeah. once again. Uh, I started off with masks. Yeah. Masks and uh, scrunchies. Then uh, the stashi. The zip thing is called a stashi. Okay. Like this is a scrunchie okay. which you can stash into. So it's a stashi. Then... Uh, this is a hair bonnet, uh, not a lot of people, like they used to wear it in the olden days but nobody understood the reason why people were wearing it. It's to protect your hair while sleeping at night. Because is it? Yes. So when you sleep at night, your hair is rubbing against the cotton pillowcase with friction. And um, this protects the hair, especially now when we do curly girl method on our hair. We are putting in so much product, so much time into it and then to sleep on a cotton pillowcase and friction making everything frizzy and ruining it. Um, better than that is to wear this bonnet. If you don't want to wear a bonnet, if elastics around your head give you a headache, you can switch to a satin pillowcase. Like it's a normal pillowcase. It's like you can even wrap a satin fabric around the pillow. So this is made by you? Yes. And I've switched, I've taken out all my cotton pillowcases from the bedsheet sets and switched them to satin ones. So satin would be better then? Yes. It's not only beneficial for your hair, but it's also beneficial for your skin. Okay. Like a lot of people don't know it, but the main reason for acne is the storage of bacteria in the pillowcases. Cotton is an absorbent material because it has a low thread count. So it absorbs the bacteria. When you're sweating in your sleep, all the dirt that is collected on your face, cotton absorbs it. Satin doesn't absorb it. It just remains on the surface and it goes off. So 
this actually helps with skin. I've had fairly better skin. I've had reduced hair fall since I switched to satin. And uh, yeah, I, I, I get better sleep because everyone knows that you want a cold side of the pillow and the warm side of the pillow. So when you flip the pillow over, you want the other side to be cooled. With the satin pillowcase, it's actually cold on the other Is side. Is it? Yeah. And from where did you get all this uh, knowledge and the background? Uh, I've read, I followed uh, bloggers, curly hair bloggers on Instagram. So that's an actual thing. Like there's a curly head community. People with curly hair promoting the curly girl method. They inform people a lot. So I, I read about it a lot before I could get into it because I didn't want to be doing anything wrong. After I started, a lot of people started this sewing business with masks and scrunchies and all. But uh, it gave me an edge having curly hair because I knew what was good for my hair because I had read before starting. So I feel like reading is very important before you want to start something new. So I feel uh, everyone started the business but nobody understood the reason behind scrunchies. Like inside the scrunchies just an elastic but what goes over the elastic is what makes the difference to hair fall. Okay, yeah. so uh, the present day youth definitely are different from our days. Yes. And uh, uh, how do you see the youth of today? Like you. Are they like you, most of them? Are uh, they focused? Do they have a mission? Uh, so there are two types of youth when it comes to focus. There are some that are different person during the day, a different person at night. Is it? Okay, so I am one of those people who are different during the day and different during the night. So, in the, during the day, you tell me whatever work has to be done, I'll do it properly, I have to sit and study, I'll do everything. But at night, if I want to go to a party, I have to go to that party and you'll see me as a completely different person. While studying, I'm this person that's into the book, studying properly and everything. But at night, when I'm uh, partying, I'm a different person. Okay. That's the case with many people. For that matter of fact, my dentist... <laughs> Uh, I go to him during the day, he's like this serious person telling me how good my teeth are or how bad my teeth are or whatever. But then I meet him at a place, like a different place at night, at a bar or at a pub or something and he's a completely different person. I'm like, are you the same person I met during the day? So yeah, that is one section of the youth. The other section of the youth that I would say are, they are lost because there's no proper career guidance in our country. Even if they have, like, they focus on people's intelligence, but not what people actually want to do. Like, uh, our education system from the beginning should focus on what we want to do, more on our aptitude and our interests. But what is happening is we are learning things that are not going to be used in the future. Like, I still date. I don't know why I had to memorize the date where someone died or someone was born. Like, I have not used it anywhere. Except for knowledge in my head, I have not used it anywhere. A square plus B square is equal to C square. I have not used that anywhere. So, I feel like we should, like, from the beginning, from grassroots level, we should start educating children on what they are interested in, rather than focusing on something that everyone is doing. Like, for example, a country that I really love the education system of is Finland. I have a neighbor who's settled in Finland and they told me that her child who's in KG2 has an interest in carpentry. So they start with carpentry at that stage. At that stage? Yes, in KG2 and first standard. Yeah. They're teaching them carpentry. Her other son likes cooking. So they've started teaching them the basic skills like cooking, like what is needed for cooking, the techniques. Not Obviously not exposing them to fire and sharp knives at that uh, at that an early stage. But they are teaching them the basics, the uh, theory about cooking, the techniques of cooking. And I feel like that's something like we should do. A lot of people uh, don't enjoy what they do. They just go to the job, finish it just to earn money and come back. But I feel like enjoying what you actually want to do makes a big difference. It does, it does. Uh, so also I think uh, is the case with our spiritual life. They say yes. that today uh, not uh, the youngsters don't want to go to pray to the church or to the temple. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Uh, now spiritual life has become bound to four walls. That is a church or a temple or whatever. So like I feel like the youth of today actually wants to be outside more. 
like i am not saying don't have masses don't have holias i'd be there i'll be there because i actually feel at peace during a mass i love singing in the choir during mass i love being there during an ad- adoration feeling the silence but at the same time i want that religion factor to be inculcated in the outside world as well so when you're having sports or you're having some uh, events outside you have a little bit of religiousness you add, take that religious factor and add it to the adventure part of it for example i attended uh, father rob galea's concert the other day did you attend yes uh, did on, you like it i loved it i loved it the energy there was so beautiful the majority of the crowd attending that concert was youth and that shows how different father rob is from the general priests because father rob connected with us in on a different level on a completely different level he spoke to us like he was one of us he spoke to us like he was one of us he dressed like he was one of us he sang songs like he was one of us his songs are not the normal blah 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 blah, blah, blah that we sing in church he had rock he had pop and he had a normal acoustic also he displayed the lyrics on the screen so that we could sing along with him he made us dance and people were actually dancing listening and i it. believe also elderly people the also the elderly people were and also and they were also involved yes. in what he was doing yes because he had backup dancers to show them what to do okay the yeah. youngsters know how to dance because they are going for parties they are going here they are going there so they know how to dance but for the elderly because they'll be lost they don't know what to do he had backup dancers yeah. and the people were actually enjoying it because you took that religion factor and placed it in an out- outdoor environment it is not the re- regular Yeah, I, it was. I'm not saying it was not religious. He had his prayer. He told us how he got into the religious life. He told us how to get closer to God, but he didn't do it in a boring way. He did it in a way that would attract us towards the especially church. the youth. Yes. So uh, you had lots to share with us, and uh, it was uh, very nice to have you in conversation with Sanalda. We wish you all the best. We hope that the youth keeps on changing the way you have shown. and wish you all the best sanalda thank you very much thank you